Dear Rover fans, um, sorry not to bring you an update on the Rover. Basically, I haven't done much because I've just bought a new house and basically all my time has been taken up dealing with that and DIY and painting and decorating and stuff. And then when I did get a moment to work on cars, my daily driver, my ever-reliable 530D, has developed what you might say is a fairly major, sorry, fairly major oil leak. Uh, I've removed the top of the engine cover just to have a quick poke around. Um, this is not your normal kind of old here, a couple of spots of oil. This thing is really pissing out <laughs> to the point where the whole of the underside of the engine all the way through, um, it's just dripping off there. We have a couple of culprits. One is the line out of the bottom of the intercooler back to the inlet. So if there's oil in there, it means it's breathing heavy and maybe turbo seals. The weird thing is the car doesn't smoke. Um, loads of oil down here. The under trays were both absolutely saturated in oil, which is not good. Um, the car I drove to work this morning and then realised I had a fairly major problem and put trays underneath it and literally just like not even running just sitting here on the ground all day it has deposited that much oil and that to me is quite scary so my plan is I've been down the petrol station and bought a can of petrol uh, no, I'm not going to set fire to the car. I'm going to clean off as much as I can and then have another good poke around as to what I can see might be doing it. It's definitely wet with oil up to a high level in there. And the only thing I can think it could be that high is the cam cover seal. Um, that's wet because I've been topping it up because the oil, lower oil level light came on. Down in here as well behind the left hand side of the engine it's also wet with oil it's not showing up very well i don't have a separate torch on this so yeah i'm gonna clean up as best i can and then um run it again and see if i can see where fresh oil leaks from really really annoying i can't remember where i got to yesterday i was tired and grumpy because I spent a lot of time trying to diagnose what the oil leak was on this car and where it was coming from. So I cleaned it all off, took it for a drive, it spat oil out of this area, which run all the way down the side of the engine. I also have a separate leak at the back, which runs down that side, dangerously close to the turbo manifold. Basically, I've come to the conclusion that my cam cover gasket had gone and it needs replacing so that's my current thinking but if it isn't that then i'm going to need to move all of that out of the way to work out what it is anyway but just as an illustration of how bad it is this is all still running off the underside of the engine so um i don't know how i'm going to edit this yet if this is the start of the video for you, you're lucky because there were some really boring videos yesterday of me cleaning the car. I don't think I'm going to subject everyone on YouTube to that, but needless to say, it was a thankless task and involved lots of rags and petrol only for me to then drive the car and make it all dirty again. But at least I know, yes, I definitely do have a massive oil leak. Um, and I think I know what it is. So I've ordered the parts for replacing the cam seal. Oh, sorry, the cam cover seal. And that is basically, you need um, the gasket itself, which goes in here. Because you have to take this inlet manifold off and the fuel rail and the injectors off, I've also ordered um, new injector seals and I might also order the O-ring seals as well for them. Hopefully they'll all arrive by the time it comes to putting it all back together again. Uh, I've also ordered another one of these um, filters here that's called the vortex filter it's basically the crankcase breather but they can get blocked which means that any internal pressure 
developed in the sump can't return or get burnt so it's actually pressurizing which might actually be forcing oil out as well so i'm going to change that also ordered a new air filter and a couple of other bits and pieces um, another thing worth noting all the reading about this that i've done on the internet says that if you remove the injectors and you don't put them back in the same order it can throw a wobbly basically they're coded so they need to be removed kept in the order that they came out in and also to help matters i'm going to disconnect the battery before doing any of this work and then that should keep um, errors to a minimum when i put all the sensors back in and uh, turn the key for the first time right battery is now disconnected as is the um, pipe from the intercooler up to the throttle body I have noticed that there has been quite a lot of oil coming out of this thing in previous weeks and I'm really hoping that that is because it's not turbo seals but the turbo and all of that induction system is working a bit harder because of that potential for the vortex filter to be gummed up so I'm holding on to that thought that's the metal underbelly panel which was on the underside of the engine all of that oil came out last night on my aborted attempt to drive home which you may or may not get to see in full youtube delights it was very boring very pointless but here you can see oil collecting on the bottom of the engine part of it's coming down the driver's side of the bell housing from the back of the head and the rest of it in fact the majority of it is still coming down from the passenger side forward end of the cam cover and then it runs down behind that water to uh, oil cooler and across the bottom of the engine as well I'm uh, not fully ruling out finding other leaks on the underside of that in that manifold somewhere else perhaps behind the oil filter housing but um, I can't get to that area without stripping off half the top of the engine anyway so I'll do that and then we'll see where we get to probably not doing this in uh, owner's manual order because I don't have the owner's manual so what I'm doing is just disconnecting anything obviously that's gonna run to this part got another sensor down there I've disconnected the EGR from this which I'll take off as one assembly with that so we've also got a vacuum pipe for that and a connector so just slowly work my way around methodically removing stuff i might also have to remove that to get access to the back i might do that soon i remember having to do that just to get the air filter out last time so whip all that off as well the list of parts i've removed is growing taken the scuttle panel covers off with the pollen filters those will be changed have taken the brace that goes between the strut towers and the bulkhead removed that that's the rear cover of the engine right up against the bulkhead which needs to come off so you can get the inlet manifold out so this is what we're left with that's my air filter that i think has only done about 12,000 miles so it's already crappy but i'll be changing it anyway um, access to the back now with all of that cross bracing and bits and pieces gone one thing I nearly forgot about is releasing the top of the dipstick tube with just that um, 10 mil six-sided socket so I'm gonna now attempt to get the top part of the inlet manifold off so it's all of these 10 mil bolts and where are they these nuts down here around disconnecting everything I found another connector right at the back here which you need to get rid of and then before I forget where it came from this is the plate that holds the rear cover on and I think it was under that one there or that one basically I'll have to remember which one it was before it all gets put back together I might check my earlier video it might have been that one because they put a white paint marking there but I don't know yeah it must have been that one okay cool right got the upper layer of the inlet manifold off and now i'm having second thoughts about my original diagnosis the whole of this side of the engine is coated in oil and each of the inlet tracts is full of oil as are all of the swirl flaps um, and it is basically a big horrible mess and what i thought was oil leaking out from the cam cover here it might not be it might just be the oil has dripped down onto that plate there and then recirculated around whereas in the other places it could have dropped straight down the side of the engine and disappeared 
that's the inlet. You can see all of the swirl flaps completely gummed up, like horribly so. Um, here are the runners, and it is, well, it's not pretty. Um, so what I'm thinking might have happened now is we have the beginnings of a turbo oil seal problem and it has just been filling up the inlet. Uh, what's slightly confusing is that it doesn't really burn any oil in terms of visible exhaust emissions. It did when the front of the car was jacked up high, which could be oil draining out and going through, but I really don't know. But I'm wondering whether or not while this side is all off, I shouldn't do some remedial works on the turbo. I really don't want to have to because it's another can of worms, but there's little point doing this much stripping and then not making sure everything is fixed. Thinking about this further, this could be the onset of a disaster because sitting on the bottom of these, on the underside of the inlet manifold, were some rubber seals with little washers. And on closer inspection, I have one, two, three, four, missing one, five, missing one. They are fucked. But this one, which did come off um, in the engine bay, was sat up here. Uh, so I've got two missing, which I can't find, and a whole load of open orifices straight into the top of the engine. So the danger is one of them has gone in there because I've had a fish around in here and I can't see them, nor can I see them on the underside of the car. So I won't properly stop panicking until I've taken that off because I can look into, inside the top of the timing cover and at least check they're not in there. But if they have gone into there, they've gone straight into a cylinder, which is not good news. So um, I'm going to keep stripping down then get myself a magnet on a stick and try and fish them out if they are in there. If not, hopefully they'll turn up somewhere around here or on the floor. Just a couple more things before I forget. Um, as well as the multi-plugs to up disconnect down here, there was also a vacuum line to the little solenoid thing um, which operates the swirl flaps that went there. So that's the actuator and that opens and closes all of your swirl flaps. They all actually work and they're all complete and still there. So it shows that BMW's upgrades to stop them falling into the engine worked. On this side, I've taken off the airbox cover and removed the air filter. The airbox cover was actually a bit of a pain. Uh, what have I done with it? Oh, here it is. Because you've got a Torx bit in there and all of my Torx bits in my, well, I was gonna say crappy, it's not, it's just, not particularly comprehensive Halfords kit. They're all quite thick walled and they wouldn't go in. So what I've been using is actually just a conventional eight mil six sided socket, which does fit and is nice and thin walled. And the other benefit is when you're trying to undo this one, the other one, its partner is down in there, which with a big socket, you'd never get to but with this you can just about slide it through and get on the end of that final torx bit so that's on there now so just a tip if you don't have as many workshop tools as you probably should you can use a six sorry a six-sided eight mil socket all right next thing is to release these leakage valves off the tops of the injectors there's a special tool for this, but what I've been doing is just very, very carefully levering the grey bit up, and I mean very carefully. Really, I should go and get some WD-40, um, give them all a bit of a lube. But basically, the idea is this grey outer sheath slides up, and then the whole thing just disconnects off the top of the injector. So I just wiggled it with a screwdriver and got that bit off. Might need a bit more wiggling. It's probably a two-handed job, but we shall try. Oh, bollocks, broke it. Actually, no, I haven't broken it. It's just separated there. But yeah, basically you lift that bit up. That bit just um, clips on and off the top. 
and this bit comes up and then it should allow that bit to pull off so yeah very gently lever that up it should then grab that lever lift and it should those tangs unclip from around the end of that injector right I've refined my technique I can try and show you there's two grooves in the side so just twist the screwdriver it begins to lift up and then wedge it in the next one down same again whole thing comes off nothing broken nothing bollocks it's easier doing this when you're not holding a camera but hopefully you get the idea sometimes the caps do come off but as I say they're not broken they just clip back on again back onto those two holes there the next bit is to undo the main unions from the common rail to each of the injectors. Now, before I did this job, I thought I needed to buy a special socket, a bit like a modified crow's foot adapter. So it has the open end of a spanner effectively, but with a socket attachment on it. So I've gone and bought one of those off eBay. It's a 17 millimeter. So just for the hell of it, I thought, nah, access is quite good to that one so I just put a spanner on it and it cracked open um, really easily and then I did the same with this one and again I've been lucky and this is really easy to turn in fact after a couple of revolutions I think it's now finger tight and that's without even lubricating it WD-40 so I'm not bothered if I don't manage to undo them all at this stage because I have got a tool coming in the post but I thought I might as well just continue trying to crack them off again not on easy so yeah might have wasted 11 quid buying at all but at least um, when it comes to putting them back together and talking them up I'll have the right tool to put a torque wrench on and make sure I get the right figures yeah it's kind of good in a way it makes me think that nobody else has been in here or at this before well, I've undone all of the nuts that hold the injectors in but they won't come out without a bit of uh, persuasion i've bought a slide hammer but that won't turn up till tomorrow so there isn't really a great deal more i can do tonight because you can't get the cam cover off until the injectors are out the only other thing to do which i can do is remove that um, valve and see what it looks like all right got the filter off yeah, I'm not seeing what I'm expecting to see. I thought that this car would have had what I thought was a vortex type filter, whereas that I'm pretty sure is the bog roll type, which is renowned for clogging and generally being useless. In here is some kind of diaphragm. So I'm gonna unclip the top now and see what that looks like. All right, here's our springy valvey diaphragmy thing. It hasn't breached. It still moves and makes an air sucking noise when you cover the port and pull the diaphragm down so that doesn't look obviously wrong that does look a bit oil crudded up but then again it's a diesel so it probably just is like that but um i'll strip it a bit further and see if anything looks obviously wrong I've just uh, taken the actual filter cartridge out and it's dated the third month 2015 so this being a 2009 plate somebody has at least been servicing it properly and changing that which is good what's bad is that I was hoping if that was blocked it could have been pushing oil into the inlet under pressure and being part of my problem and I'm not saying it's not blocked but the inside isn't crudded up it probably has limited flow of air through it but yeah I don't think that's my problem Right, we are skipping forward 24 hours. Some of my new parts have arrived. That's my new Bosch air filter. That's the new cam cover gasket, which is nice and squidgy and compliant. I also bought a couple of cans of brake cleaner just to blast dirt and crap off the engine and out of the inlet manifold. Um, I bought myself a diesel injector puller tool, which is effectively a small slide hammer which screws to the top of the injector 
So I'm hoping that will help me get the injector out. Um, in other news, I had a bit more reading on the internet last night and there are loads of people complaining about oil leaks on these engines and it might not actually be the cam seal it could actually be the seals on all of the spindles of the swirl flaps what happens is the seals that go between the flap and the bottom of the housing weak and that certainly fits with what I've got here um, so oil traveling through the runners just dribbles out through there so it might be that actually I'm doing all this work to change the cam cover gasket and it's completely pointless because it's actually leaking out of the swirl flaps anyway so because of that I have done some more reading and the suggestion is that even though these are the later ones that they don't break up and go into your engine you can just um, to secure the oil leak you remove them anyway and fit bank blanking plugs so I'm going to do that bad news is that I've had to order them and they're not going to come till next week uh, I also continue to look for the washers and rubber seals that I was missing from two of these uh, you can actually get a torch shone in there and look right the way towards the valves and I can't see anything in there so they're either hidden down the engine or they're in here and I'll get them later on so not much really to report and I'll uh, have a fiddle with my new injector removal tool and see how I'm getting with that so here we have the tool screwed onto the top of the injector I've just done it by hand and then this is effectively a big solid weight and just doing that there you go injector is out so I've got to number that to make sure I get it back in the wrong hole clean it all off and then um, repeat a further five times well that went very well I was anticipating all sorts of nightmares of stuck in injectors all the rest of it but that tool I'm very pleased I bought that made that very simple indeed those are the injectors all numbered I've got new copper seals for the bottom. I've got the new O-rings. One thing I haven't bought, which I wasn't sure whether I actually needed or not, was each of the tops of these had a little O-ring for the um, low pressure, or I know, bypass, I guess you'd call it, leak back from the injector. Um, it probably would have been a good idea to get new ones of those as well. I've got a while till my blanking plates turn up for the swirl flaps, so I can buy them if I need to. Um, really, all that remains now is to go around and undo the actual cam cover bolts and nuts and lift that all off and see what I can see inside. But I think I'll leave that for a little bit later on because I've got other stuff to do right now.